All right, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris, and today I have a very special guest uh, here for this video. I have uh, Alex Appleyard. Uh, you know, I've always really liked Alex for his work. Uh, I've been talking with Alex since, you know, last year's World Juniors. Uh, that's kind of where I met him. We've been doing, you know, just a bunch of stuff talking about prospects and things like that. Uh, but today, uh, me and Alex are going to be breaking down uh, Cam York and uh, Michigan's first game of the season here. Uh, and it was, you know, Pretty much a blowout uh, for the most part, but it was a quick, very fast-paced game. Uh, Alex, how are you? Thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, I, I really appreciate you coming on today. Uh, no problem. Pleasure's all mine. Um, yeah, it was uh, fun to see the NCAA back underway with uh, Flyers' involvement. And yeah, as you said, like a fast-paced, good game. And it, even though it was a blowout, yeah, it was one that kind of held your attention the whole way through, which is kind of rare. Yeah, and it, it, it's funny, too, because, like, it like it, it just, just the to me, I just kind of noticed like the difference in play in the teams is just astronomical. I mean, Michigan, their speed and their skill really showed out today. Uh, final score was eight to one. Um, at one point, it was you know six nothing, seven nothing, and then eight nothing. And then in the, in the last like two and a half minutes, uh, Arizona State ended up getting one there. But kind of just uh, breaking it down, you know, for j just to start off, they had Cam York playing with Keaton Pearson on the first pair. Um, and then, you know, Michigan, they get two, a couple goals here early, uh, two to nothing. York was looking really good. He was skating well. He had one turnover, uh, that I saw in this period it, it, just off that play. There wasn't no harm done. Um, but it was pretty much a tough play for him to make tough spot. Uh, and then York was also on the penalty kill. He looked really good on that too. Uh, I feel like for majority of the first period, he looked really good skating wise. Um, and that can, and that can really continue throughout the game. Uh, he's making a lot of space for himself. He was breaking the buck out well. Um, and after the first period, shots were 15-5 Michigan, and they led 2 to nothing. Uh, so, Alex, just, just kind of to go off, what did you see from that first period there? Um, I think the, the game was kind of interesting. I feel like one player carried each period for Michigan. So, yeah. in the first period, Thomas Bordelow, he didn't show up. I mean, he got his assist, but he didn't show up kind of heavily on the, on the score sheet. But mm -hmm. in that first period, he just ran the game. His first ever NCAA game. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the San Jose Sharks prospect and just... Took over the game, was fantastic on the penalty kill. He had a beautiful play where he almost scored, uh, scything through a few players and going backhand. Goalie yeah. just got something on it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he, he set up the second goal. Um, and then in the second period, I feel like it was really kind of Cam York's period. Yeah. Uh, not only did he get an absolutely beautiful assist, like walking from the left side, up the right side, getting it on the puck on his backhand and slotting it in for you know a pretty, pretty easy goal there. Um, and then he obviously scored his goal right. from a beautiful play from Owen Power. A nice pass where York crept up from the left side and put it five hole to score. But he also could have quite easily had two or three extra points in that, in that yeah. second period. Mm -hmm. uh, he walked up into the slot on a power play and fired just like an inch or so wide of the, the top corner when he had all net to look at. And I think he was pretty, pretty frustrated with himself for that. And later in the same shift, he had a slap shot from the point with the same corner open and just missed again. Um, yeah. and he also had two nice passes in that period around the net that could have easily gone in. So, yeah, yeah, the second period was one that, that, that York really, really took over. And then the third period, I think um, Owen Power, who's, you know, going to be a top five pick in this NHL draft, a fantastic young defenseman. He really, really came into his own. He'd already had a couple of assists um, earlier in the game, but he scored his goal um, and kind of ran, ran play when he was on ice. He In the first two periods, I feel like he was kind of, even though he got his two assists power, uh, he was kind of settling into the NCAA game a bit. He made a few kind of bad plays in his own zone. I mean... Bad is relative. There were nothing plays where he just didn't look when he was putting it to his partner at the wall. Uh, but in the third, he kind of just bossed yeah. the game when he was out there. And it was nice as well to see him mm -hmm. and York playing together at points in the offensive zone because they looked like they really complemented each other. And Power's such yeah. a talented player that he's, if he gets more shifts with York over the year, that's that's just going to help both of them. Right. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, I mean, you know, it's funny when you say that, you know, just plays where he kind of just threw up the wall. I think York had a handful of those in this game. He had one of the first period that I saw um, forward was kind of in a tough spot, which I mentioned. And then also, uh, in the second, uh, him and Pearson were caught. And it was like a three on three on O partial breakaway. You know, I, I, and again, no harm was done. They did get a shot on goal, but it, it was a very nice save by the Michigan goaltender. But, um, you know, I feel like for majority of that second period, it was a lot of just like the puck possession was just incredible. And for Michigan and just the way that they cycled the puck was great. And, I feel like a lot of plays um, that York were making were just smart defensive plays. Like he wasn't really, he like he wasn't forcing anything. He was just making the plays that were there for him, and he 
He was just moving the puck, was able to, and he really generated a lot of ice for himself. Um, and I, I think that really benefits just from his skating overall. Um, which again, that would that was I feel like that was one of the biggest things. Um, you know, just with him at the draft was that like his skating was a little bit off. And then I think you know, for majority of it, I think he's really gotten better uh, with that skating. I think it really showed today as well. Yeah, I mean, the thing with with York is I don't think he's quite as flashy as some of the other the top defensive prospects around the NHL. But he's just so economical with his style of play. Like, he yeah. just ra- rarely makes a mistake. He's not the biggest guy, but he's he's a plus defensive player. He's a good mm-hmm. penalty killer. He moves right. the puck really well. He's smart in where he positions himself in the defensive zone. He's mm-hmm. not super physical, but his understanding of kind of angles and where to angle forwards off at the blue yeah, line is insane. key for the, for the modern AHL. Right. And, and, and it's funny you say that because especially right, like, if like you don't have to be physical if you're able to make that play all the time and you're in the right spot. Yeah, exactly. And I think you see that more and more as we've gone to a faster NHL where stepping up at the blue line is even more important than ever and not necessarily right. making contact. Because obviously, if you miss, you're, you're putting your team on a in a situation where they're probably 3v2 or, or 2v1. The Flyers already have some really good defensemen in that area. I mean, I would argue that it's one of Prov- parts of Provorov's game, along with getting up ice and getting to the slot. I think and then Phil Myers, Phil Myers came in this year and straight off the bat has been brilliant at the blue line. And as well, if you know, if Shane Gostas is going to play a part in Flyers Blue Line next year, people malign his defense at times. And yeah, he can get pushed off the puck around the net. But at the blue line, when he comes to stepping up on guys and making plays with his stick, he's really good. And uh, yes. and and Yark, I think keep in the pocket is going to yeah. be the same. Mm-hmm. And, and and it's funny too because a lot of guys that remind me like that, um, you know, just with you know making the right play, being in the right position, not being as physical, like that reminds me a lot of Niskan in this past season where he was just. He wasn't as physical. He he'd make hits when he had to, but he was able to move the puck out, um, and he he just made a, a lot of smart plays along the wall and things like that. And I feel like York did that a lot, um, but I, I but as I said, I think his skating today really opened up more things for him, uh, and and just the way that he was able to make those tight turns and things along those lines. But uh, j- just going into second period here, uh, York he, he starts on the second. Uh, his pass did lead to an early two on one, no shot on goal, and then a couple minutes later, Moyle made it three to nothing, Michigan. Uh, and then, as you talked about earlier, he misses a shot on net. Odd men rush through on a partial break, right? No goal. Uh, York he makes a great play carrying the puck, dances around to the slot, feeds it across, gets an assist for nothing um, from Granowitz. There gets a shot on goal from the point. Again, it was an easy save. Uh, as, as the goaltender saw it all the way, Arizona was literally just getting destroyed at this point, as we talked about with the with the uh, moving the puck around and things like that. Michigan, their their skill and the skating was just so evident today, uh, and it was very one sided at one point. Five nothing here, as you said, great pass from Power down low to York, uh, who was cutting in there, uh, and you know he really shot a five hole. It was pretty much really the only shot option he probably had at that at that moment. Um, if anything, he could have maybe cut to the back end, but that was probably the best shot. Uh, option that he had there so end of the second it was six nothing the shots were 25 to 12 Michigan there so uh, what did you think uh, just from that second period it, it, at that point it was pretty much pretty much a blowout um, as it was literally a whole domination of Michigan that period yeah and I think um, after about halfway through the game you saw a kind of difference in how the referees actually left yeah. the game they mm. played it a bit tighter for Michigan as soon as Michigan made even a minor error they were calling penalties and ended up with with ASU ended up with I think seven power players yeah, I think there was four in the third. Uh, yeah, and one yeah. of one of the power plays, which was one of the more contentious ones, was called on Cam York with Michigan yeah. on the power play. Uh, there's a broken stick on ice, and Cam York pushes it to the side, and they called him for interference um, for moving the stick, which would usually almost never be called. He didn't push it into play. He moved it to the side of the ice. He was just clearing the ice up to, to play at the point. I mean, technically, yeah, it can be a penalty, but it, it's not one that's often called. Um, right. And I think if it wasn't for that, Michigan could have easily put it into double figures. Yeah, right. And that's the thing. I think I think the thing was is that they probably were just calling it like that to try to make the game a little bit more interesting than what it really was on the scoreboard. But uh, at that moment, going into the third period, six nothing Arizona. They change uh, they change up goalies to start this period. York, as you said, again misses the net almost at the top corner, uh, draws that penalty. Seven nothing uh, with Ben Yer. He gets his second of the game. Michigan, they ended up taking their third penalty at that time. Uh, they ended up taking a fourth, uh, and then they get two more goals here. Arizona gets one in the last two and a half minutes, uh, and that is a eight to one final. So, really, to start off the season uh, for York and Michigan, it was a very good game. Um, I feel like, you know, I think Michigan's definitely going to, going to want to carry this into tomorrow as they play Arizona again tomorrow. 
Um, but you know, I, 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 as just for the beginning, I thought York had a really good game defensively. He was definitely playing with confidence. Uh, he picks up two points. Um, just from the box score, he was credited with uh, six shots. He was also a plus two today. So a pretty good game uh, for York, and hopefully he can get, he can continue this up going in these next couple games here for uh, the Wolverines. Yeah, and I think Flyers fans have a lot to be excited about with him. The yeah. Flyers have some really, really good defensive prospects. I mean, Diego Zamula is was fantastic at the World Juniors and you know up there as a potential top four defenseman for the Flyers in the very near future. But in my eyes, Cam York is actually a step above Zamula in terms of his potential and what he can do uh, going forward. At yeah. times, I mean, if you know, I'm not the biggest player comparable guy, um, but if you're talking about kind of Flyers defenseman that everyone knows and knows and loves over the last twenty or so years. Uh, I think the one who he at times reminds me of, not just because he's a redhead, is um, Eric Desjardins. I think they play, you know, neither are the biggest guy, um, neither kind of are too flashy, but both are just really solid in both ends of the ice. They move the puck really well, beautiful skaters, um, and can be power play guys, PK guys. I don't think he's going to have the, the ceiling that Desjardins, obviously, was a, right. was the guy who almost, you know, won a Norris a few times. I don't think he's going to be quite that good, but, you know, as tear down from that, I think he can be a really good number two defenseman. Um mm. As soon as two, you know, two, three, four years away um, for the Flyers, and I think, quite frankly, uh, in 2021, 22, he's gonna he's gonna make a run at playing for the Flyers uh, at camp. I I I definitely agree. I mean, I think I think the I think the window is there for him. To be honest with you, um, I think there's a lot of things that could benefit him. Uh, you know, just going into this year. And honestly, I think if there wasn't as much of an uncertainty with the AHL, we probably could have pushed maybe for to play this year. Um, but he did go back to college for his sophomore year. So, uh, again, Alex, I, you know, again, I, I really appreciate you coming on. And I thank you. Uh, I, I've really enjoyed doing this. And uh, again, um, please just tell everybody where they can follow you, you know, where some of your work is and things like that. Yeah, well, on Twitter, it's probably where I'm most active. I'm at, at uh, AV Appleyard. Uh, post generally prospects updates a lot from Europe, but also you know some of the North American guys. Um, you'll find my articles now occasionally at the Athletic, uh, the Athletic Philadelphia. Um, still putting out a bit of content alongside Charlie there, um, and then also at Smart Scouting. Um, Josh Tesla, uh, who used to be at uh, Future Considerations, came to me and got me involved with Smart Scouting a, a few months back, and it's uh, I'm able to write kind of whatever I want in terms of prospect coverage uh, for the draft. And I've now just moved on to the NHL 2021 draft. So I wrote, I wrote a report the other day on uh, Simon Edvinson, who plays for Frölunda. And um, you're going to get probably 30, 40 reports from me over the course of the year, mainly on Swedes, uh, Swedes and Finns. So watch out for that for if you want to start following the 2021 draft early. All right. So, uh, yeah, again, you know, please make sure you go follow Alex. Uh, remember, guys, podcast articles, those links are on my channel. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you guys in the next one.